Hi everyone, welcome to Cash Hawks. Today we're off to the small town of Kaio in the Whangarau Harbour to see where a ship called the Boyd was attacked and set on fire. It's a time in our history when attitudes were very different to now. Yes, come and find out about the Boyd. It's around a four hour drive from Auckland to the Whangarau Harbour. We're coming into the small town of Kaio. In December 1809, the sailing ship Boyd was anchored near here in the Whangarau Harbour where it was to pick up a cargo of timber spars. It was attacked by a group of Maori who killed and ate 66 of the crew and passengers in Utu for the captain's mistreatment of a young local chief, Te Ara, who had sailed from Sydney on the Boyd. Offences against the mana of a chief were intolerable to Maori and required Utu. The captain's actions required a response, revenge to restore balance, to restore self-esteem and social standing. Local Māori were already suspicious of European visitors as a year before the crew of the sailing ship Comus had inadvertently caused an outbreak of disease that had killed many of them. The Boyd was anchored here off Peach Island. Whangarau Māori offered to show the captain and his officers some excellent curry timber. The locals led the unsuspecting ship's party in their boats up the Kaio River for several miles till they approached the conical hill Nui, on which stood the pa of Te Ara's people. It was on the flat below the pa here that Captain Thomas and his group were killed and eaten. At dusk, some Māori disguised themselves as a returning shore party, while other warriors waited in canoes for the signal to attack. In fading light, they gained easy access to the Boyd as they rowed the ship's boats and were dressed in the uniforms of the slain officers. Most of the Europeans were killed that evening although a number escaped by climbing up into the rigging, only to be killed later. The Boyd was then towed up the harbour towards Tayara's village and grounded on mudflats near Motawai, Red Island. The ship was pillaged of its cargo of muskets and gunpowder. During the pillaging, a musket flint ignited the gunpowder on board, causing a massive explosion that killed a number of Māori. Fire soon spread and the boy burnt down to the waterline. Let's head into the Whangarau Museum in Kaio to see artefacts salvaged from the wreck and learn more about this important event in our history. The museum displays artefacts salvaged from the Boyd by divers Wade Doak, Kelly Tauton and others. Items made from the Boyd's timbers and its cargo of Western Australian hardwood. A walking stick made of teak from the Boyd's decking. Grape shot and cannonballs were recovered by the divers. Half of a wooden lid and the bungs of a barrel. Pieces of coal, part of the Boyd's cargo, were also recovered. The only portion of the ship's figurehead to survive is badly charred and damaged by seawater. Two-year-old Betsy Broughton survived, while her mother died in the tragedy. Tom Davis, the ship's cabin boy, who had been kind to Tiara on the voyage, and Anne Morley and her baby, also survived, hidden by a local Māori woman. We're heading on a short drive to the Whangaroa Harbour to see where the wreck is located. The tragedy of the Boyd worsened when European whalers avenged the attack, killing around 60 Māori and sparking intertribal warfare in the region. They mistakenly killed the wrong people, attacking the chief Te Pahi and his people. Te Pahi had tried to save the Europeans on board. It's now a quiet boat harbour with a marina and the Whangaroa Sport Fishing Club. Let's park here. Who 
here's the monument. Yeah. Opposite this point on the harbour bed lie the remains of the sailing ship Boyd, burnt out in December 1809. Wow. Okay, so it was just out over here. Mm. You can see Motawai, Red Island, out across the water here. It's fun watching a little shag catching fish. Tiny silver fish for lunch. Let's head over to the other side of the harbour to Totara North and explore more and find a geocache. There is a small museum here with a geocache and interesting murals on local history. Okay, here we are. Can you see the cache? Little plug, and we get a pull. <laughs> there it is. Nice, oh, need tweezers for these. Yeah. yeah. Not too difficult with them. No, tweezers are good to have with you, aren't they? <laughs> they are. Caching. <laughs> Times we've cursed and we haven't had tweezers. <laughs> That's right, part of the kit really now, isn't it? There you go. Done. Viewing of the museum is by appointment only. Let's take a closer look at the murals showing the local Kauri timber industry. We are passing the old Lane and Brown shipyard and sawmill in Totara North. In this beautiful and tranquil place, it's hard to believe such a tragedy took place. For some time, New Zealand was in the avoid if at all possible category. We're back in Auckland now and on our way to the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron and its unusual link to the Boyd tragedy. The squadron is presently home to the America's Cup, won by New Zealand yachts four times. It's the oldest trophy in international sport, named after the schooner America, which won the first race back in 1851. Well, we're back from the Whangaroa Harbour, and we've found a place in Auckland where there's a little quirky piece of history. One of the sort of things we love when we're traveling around, we sometimes find really unusual things. So we thought we'd show it to you. Come and have a look. We're just going up to the members lounge and in the members lounge there is a table made from timber from the void. Let's go and have a look.
Lots of beautiful yachting trophies here. We were distracted by one in particular. There it is in all its glory, the America's Cup, known as the Old Mug. It's 1.1 metres high, made of sterling silver and weighs over 14 kilograms. Safely secured away, let's head into the members lounge to see what we've come to see, the link with the sailing ship Boyd. Here's the table. It says presented by Sir E. Davis, life member. And it has the Boyd written along here. And this is all timber from the Boyd. Um, possibly from the Boyd itself, but it was carrying a cargo of um, timber. So maybe some of the timber from uh, the cargo. So a really quirky piece of history <laughs> stuck away here in the Royal New Zealand uh, Yacht Squadron. Well, that brings us to the end of our cash walk. We hope you found the burning of the Boyd an interesting part of our history. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to go geocaching.